Merci beaucoup aux organisateurs uh, pour cette magnifique journée. Uh, so, uh, I will be talking to you about uh, some results uh, I found on basal processes, but the uh, initial motivation was in studying uh, some solutions to uh, stochastic PDEs or SDEs with the drift which is singular. Uh, so here is the motivation. So we have solutions to some complicated equations and we're interested in some properties of the corresponding semi group. Uh, in particular, we want to know if we have some continuity of the semi group uh, with respect to the initial condition, which uh, translates formally in the uh, notion of strong failure property, which I'm going to explicit uh, later on. So my plan is the following. I'm first going to uh, explain what the strong failure property is. Uh, then I will uh, explain to you a very uh, efficient tool to prove strong failure bounds, which is the bismuth edward thiele formula. And in the last uh, part, I will um, explain to you how one can obtain such a formula in a very non-dissipative setting, uh, which is given by the Bessel processes. So uh, the setting is the following. Consider any Polish space E and uh, a, a Markovian semi group PT over E. So uh, I will uh, be considering two, uh, test, uh, uh, two spaces of test functions, the uh, space of uh, Borel and bounded functions in E, which I will denote by uh, uh, B sub B, and the space of uh, continuous and bounded functions in E. Now, uh, the semi group PT is said to uh, have the failure property if for all T and all phi, which is continuous, PT of phi will also be continuous and bounded. So this is a property which is, uh, holds uh, very in, a very general, uh, uh, in very general cases. But the property that I will be interested in here is the strong failure property, which says that uh, PT of phi will be continuous for any phi which is only Borel. So it may be very um, uh, discontinuous a priori, but for any time uh, T which is positive, PT of phi should be continuous. So it is strong failure if the semi group creates continuity in positive time. So, uh, so in the sequel, I will uh, focus on the case uh, where E is given by the real line, and then the semi group is given by expectation of phi of xt uh, at, of x, where xt of x is the solution of some SDE uh, with uh, drift given by B and co diffusion coefficient given by sigma, which I suppose to be uh, smooth fu functions on R. Uh, and initial conditions given by x. And uh, so uh, here are two examples. So um, first consider the case where sigma is 0 and b is equal to 1. Then we're just in the case of an ODE. And in that case clearly the semi group is just given by translation of uh, the initial condition by t. And obviously it's not strong failure because it does not create any regularity of the function. On the other hand consider the case where b is 0 and sigma is equal to 1. So it's the case of Brannon motion. In that case, the semi group is given by convolution by the heat kernel, which is given here. And uh, this is a, a smooth kernel. So uh, PT is not only strong failure, but even better, PT of phi will be smooth for any phi which is uh, Borel for any uh, positive T. Um, so here are two cases that are very different. And we see that the important fact is that um, in our SDE here, the um, uh, stochastic uh, part should be um, non-degenerate enough for the solution to have some uh, smoothing property here. And um, so the PD interpretation of that is that uh, in the first example I, I, I gave to you, we have a hyperbolic PDE, so a trans transport equation, whereas in the second example we have a, an elliptic PDE which creates regularity. And what happens in general for uh, general uh, coefficients? Well, we have very sharp criteria, for example, Hermander's criterion, which um, says that uh, if sigma is sufficiently non-degenerate in some sense, then for all t strictly positive, PT of phi will be smooth for any phi which is uh, Borel. So in particular, strong failure property holds. But uh, what I'm interested in is uh, for some uh, qu quantitative versions of, uh, this, uh, of the strong failure property. So my problem is for any given t to uh, quantify the difference pt phi of x minus pt phi of y when uh, x and y are uh, close. So the question is how to get obtain a bound of this quantity. So um, uh, 
the very uh, efficient tool to do that is the bismuth Worthily formula, which I'll, I'll explain to you now. So uh, for, to understand the, this formula, we'll suppose that sigma is equal to 1 here, but it's not necessary, it's just to simplify the notations. And I'll suppose that B sa satisfies uh, Lipschitz bound with the constant C. But the important assumption I'll make is that uh, B uh, satisfies this one-sided bound of the derivative. That is, B prime is uniformly bounded by some constant L, which is a real number. Uh, now, uh, the idea of the Bismuth-Elworthy-Lee formula is to uh, look at the um, dependence of the solution of the SDE with respect to the initial condition. So consider the uh, derivative of the solution with respect to the initial condition, that I'll call eta. Then, by differentiating the SDE with respect to x, it is not difficult to see that eta t solves uh, the variational equation given by this uh, differential equation. So this is an ODE with an explicit solution, eta t of x. And we remark that uh, it is, first it is uh, non-negative, which shows that x of t uh, is a non, it's increasing function of x. And moreover, it is bounded by uh, e to the power lt. Why? Because I have made the assumption here that uh, b prime is bounded by l. So this gives us boundedness of the derivative eta. So what we can say is that for phi, which is c1 bounded, by uh, the um, dom dominated convergence theorem, the derivative of the c my group pt of phi is given by this formula here. But the problem here is that we have a derivative here and we would like to get rid of the derivative because we want a strong Feller property. So uh, we should have an expression here which only involves phi instead of phi prime. And the way of getting rid of this derivative is by using the uh, uh, integration by part formula. And that's the idea of the bismuth elworth formula. So we have the following equality, the d over the derivative of the uh, C my group pt phi of x is given by 1 over t expectation of phi of x t of x and uh, multiplied by this uh, stochastic integral, uh, integral from 0 to t of eta s dBs. So here, as you can see, we got rid of the uh, phi prime here. We have no more derivative, but uh, there's the cost that we have this new random variable here, which we have to bound. So uh, the corollary of this uh, theorem is that we have the following strong Feller bound, right? Because if we integrate this uh, formula here, we obtain that for any x and y, we have a bound in the supreme norm of phi. And we have uh, this uh, constant e to the power l, where l was the bound on b prime. And we have uh, 1 over square root of t. And uh, the we have a Lipschitz bound, globally Lipschitz bound in x and y. Uh, so that's a very, uh, very nice uh, answer to that question here in a nice setting. Uh, and the crucial remark is that this bound here only involves L. It does not involve the Lipschitz constant on the drift coefficient B. And that's the reason why this uh, bismuth elworth formula is very uh, interesting and very successful, for example, when studying more complicated systems as SPDEs. So the history of this formula started by uh, uh, formula, particular form of this formula by, discovered by Jean-Michel Bismuth um, in 1984. And 10 years later, uh, the formula, um, as I presented it to you, was uh, derived by uh, David Elworthy and Xue Mei Li. And uh, so they uh, proved this formula and also gave variance for uh, higher order derivatives uh, for the CMI group uh, of uh, solutions of SDEs on some manifolds. And uh, later on, there were um, other, uh, so there were generalizations of this formula, but all these generalizations were made on the assumptions mainly that, uh, as I said above, B prime was bounded. Now the question is what happens when B prime is not bounded above by some constant L? Um, so uh, because there are very important SPDs where there, this uh, assumption does not hold. So last year there were two articles um, about some uh, similar SPDEs that are, have very uh, exotic drift term B uh, that is hardly dissipative. So this means that uh, the uh, bound that I gave above was really not uh, satisfied. And uh, so these uh, authors proved that nevertheless, there was a strong fellow property, although they did not prove a uh, bismuth elworth formula, but they used uh, methods uh, close in spirit to the bismuth elworth formula. But now these uh, articles did not answer the 
problems uh, encountered when I studied SPDEs as the following. So I'm interested in evolution SPDEs with a drift term in 1 over u cube. Uh, so when c is positive, um, we have no problem. Actually, uh, my PhD advisor Lorenzo Zambotti proved well posedness for these SPDs when um, the drift term is um, of the form c over u cube with the c positive. And he proved that um, also we have strong fellow property. And this relied on the fact that uh, the function u um, c over u cube is decreasing on r plus. So we have some dissipativity. And the, the question was, what happens if c is negative? Because in this case, we don't have dissipativity anymore. Uh, so this problem is very difficult. And uh, I, I did not, I still don't have any solution. So I said, let's look at some uh, one dimensional um, example, which has similar difficulties, but, it's, but which is easier to handle. And this example is the example of Bessel processes. Uh, so Bessel processes are uh, the following uh, processes. So it's non-negative processes on uh, with a uh, real value, uh, which satisfies this SDE with a drift term in one over x, uh, and we um, we require that the point zero is instantaneously reflecting. Uh, so it turns out that uh, there is a unique for for all delta. Uh, which is uh, positive, there is a unique solution to this equation, which is the delta dimensional Bessel process. And um, so our remark is that uh, if delta is an integer, uh, this process is, has the same law as the uh, Euclidean norm of a delta dimensional Brownian motion. Um, and um, the, so when delta is bigger than one, here the drift is dissipative. So it actually it is uh, decreasing, so we have uh, no problem. We have existence and what and uh, uni unicity result. Um, but the problem comes when delta is smaller than one. And uh, to obtain well poseness of this equation, we actually resort to some transformation of the square, and we see that the square satisfies some well posed SDE. This is the way we obtain the well posedness for this SDE for any delta. And okay. So the question is, do we have a strong Fowler property for the Bessel semi group? Um, so in order to answer this question, we can use we have an explicit formula of the semi group with a density with respect to a Lebesgue measure on R plus. And so we can compute the derivative of the semi group with respect to x. And we obtain the following. So for all t positive, uh, the semi group of the uh, delta Bessel is differentiable on R plus, and the derivative involves uh, so it's x over t times the difference of the semi group of the delta plus 2 Bessel minus the delta Bessel. So there's a nice uh, interplay between the delta Bessel and the delta plus 2 Bessel. And as a consequence, we have a strong Feller bound here, uh, which is given by um, Lipschitz. So we have a Lipschitz bound here, y minus x, which is not global, it is local, but yet it is very nice formula. And my question is, can we interpret this equality as a bismuth erwerthelie formula? So the answer is yes, but it's really not easy to see. Why? Because, um, as I said, we, ha we don't have dissipativity when delta is smaller than 1. So for example, if we compute the derivative of uh, the solution with respect to initial condition, eta t here, so remember, um, here, the drift, what I call B, is given by delta minus 1 over 2x. So the derivative is given by uh, 1 minus delta over 2x2. So you see that the supremum over r plus star of B prime, so it's 0 if delta is bigger than 1, but it's plus infinity if delta is smaller than 1. So we see that when delta becomes smaller than 1, we get into trouble. And uh, this can be seen when we look at the derivative of, of rho, because we have uh, this, uh, we can see that when delta is smaller than 1, eta t will go to infinity as t goes to t0, where t0 is the first hitting time of the origin. Uh, Nevertheless, we have a nice uh, proposition, which uh, is a variant of results of by Pitman-Yor, 
which says that uh, the delta plus 2 Bessel is absolutely continuous with respect to the delta Bessel on any finite interval. And um, we have an expression for this uh, um, Radon-Nicodym derivative. And um, OK, then we can use some uh, nice formula on uh, rho and eta, where I will not detail here. And uh, as a consequence, we finally obtain this uh, bismuth alworth formula, uh, which uh, holds for any delta positive. So it's, it looks like the uh, formula we had before, but the difference is that here, this martingale is not in L2. Actually, it will be an LP martingale for some p, depending on delta, which may be smaller than 2. And I can obtain a better bound uh, on the a better uh, Lipschitz bound than before. I can improve the, um, using this representation here, I can improve the uh, exponent on t I, I had uh, before. So I, I can obtain an exponent uh, 1 over t to the power alpha of, del of delta, where alpha of delta is um, uh, smaller than 1. Uh, depending on, uh, so it's a value which depends on delta. Uh, so, okay, so the conclusion is that um, uh, um, we obtained the bismuth alworth formula in a very non-dissipative case, so which is very surprising. And um, uh, so, okay, there's something not very satisfactory in the fact that we use very per particular uh, properties of the Bessel processes. Um, but um, so we should try to develop more conceptual tools to uh, uh, treat more general uh, processes. But uh, we have some partial results that suggest that uh, at least the strong feller bound of the type I, I've shown uh, still hold for more general systems. Uh, and that's all. And I have uh, here some references for you. Uh, and I thank you for your attention. Merci. Est-ce qu'il y a une question Henri, est-ce que tu as une question <rire> non, Une question pour moi. <rire> une question Non. Tu avais la... ouais, Est-ce que tu as d'autres applications en tête à part euh, de montrer mmh. que c'est Feller euh, De la euh, euh, formule de bismuth alworth Ely. Ouais. Uh, en fait, pourquoi je parle en français? <laughs> so, <laughs> tu peux répondre en anglais. So the application is strong. Why do are we interested in strong feller property? Uh, so I didn't mention that, but for example, um, if you have the strong feller property. Actually, that was not my question. The, my question was, uh, do you have other applications in mind? Uh, for SPDs, for example. So, for example. Uh, yes. yes. So we would like, for example, to. Uh, use uh, similar to, to find similar results for uh, SPDs of the kind um, that was here when C is smaller than zero. So uh, in that case here, this is uh, the function C over x cube will be uh, increasing, and uh, so we do not uh, have any uh, strong feller results yet. And actually, we don't have well poisonous result of such SPDs. So these SPDs are interesting because they have uh, some scaling uh, properties, um, but um, we still don't know how to define them when C is negative. Une autre question. Alors, comme on doit faire un petit changement informatique, je propose qu'on s'arrête là pour les questions. Merci, Henri. Merci.